you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. I am Eric Stockland. We are the hosts of this podcast and we're here to just talk about We're here to host. And love and just talk about nothingness. Or maybe everything. Who knows? We are so excited to record this episode today. Um, We have a lot to talk about. I feel like I look like I was just kicked off Big Brother in a huff. What does that mean? Like a mess. You look beautiful. Usually, when people get kicked off Big Brother, they like make sure they look glamorous. I said it. So you're saying that you look amazing. Like I was backdoored. Yeah. Well, wait. Don't give any spoilers, love. He's 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 referencing someone very specific who got kicked off. But we're not going to do any spoilers. We're not. We're not going to do that. Um, but yeah, we have an exciting episode. We had a crazy week. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure we have a lot to talk about. Lovey. We did have a crazy week. We do. Um, so wait, I said we do. We also do have a crazy week and we had a crazy week. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a mess. <laughs> this is a special daytime recording. So you have no excuse. For what? You should be awake. What? You should be so awake. No yawns today, I'm, folks. I, I'll yawn no matter what time of day it is. I'm tired no matter what. So who needs to relax? Do you true. want me to go first or you go first? I can go first. Okay. It's a little bit specific. And I wonder if anyone can relate to this. I don't know. Yeah. You know who needs to relax? Who? Oh. People who see shooting stars. What? It okay. drives me crazy. Because you just are so jealous? Yes. Because I think I've seen t- like two shooting stars my entire life. And people are always just like, oh, shooting star. And I, I'm like, what's the, what's it's not fair? What am I doing wrong? It's not fair. I think it's been a while since I saw one. I probably saw the last one in like high school or what something. What are you doing? Just staring at the sky all the time? I think that is what I, you do in order to see one. Decent vision. Good vision. I look up at the sky sometimes, but you I'll be never with people. never looking in the right spot. It's happened to me my whole life. I'll be with people and they'll be like, oh, shooting star. And, I, and I'll miss it. I'll miss it every And then I'll stare at the sky for what feels like forever, not see any shooting stars, look down for a second, like, oh, another one. What is that? What's that about? I'm sorry. I think you're just not looking in the right place at the right time. But what is a shooting star? It's just like a huge ball of like fire, fl- like <laughs> shooting through the sky. Like I don't a million know. Don't ask us to tell you what a shooting. What is, hey, I think it's a star. Light years a second. Yeah. It's but it's moving. Like, right. Fast. Or like a solar flare or comet, something in space. I think it's a that's star. Li- that's lit. Or- I don't know. Wow, we sound real dumb, don't we? Yeah, what? Because we don't know t- enough about shooting stars. I don't think I know. I think I just don't know enough. Sorry, I, I think missed I need that to one. know yeah. more about this. We study theater. Falling? We study theater and music. Like, we have college degrees. We just don't know what shooting so like, stars are. So you know how sh- shooting stars when you see them, which I guess you don't know because you haven't seen very many. Right. When they shoot through the sky, they don't go very long. It's like you know, really short. Like pew, yeah, pew. So then does it, if they made a sound, it would be, yeah, but like, does it disappear? Like, because to our eyesight, because it goes so far into the gap, into the universe, or does it like disintegrate and go away? So instead of answering any questions, you're just posing more. Well, yeah. Cause I know that like sometimes when like there've been comets headed towards the earth or things headed towards the earth, they say Uh like, once it hits our atmosphere, it like will combust and like fall apart. So I'm like, oh, is a shooting star when it goes away from your eye, is it? Is it like disintegrating and like disappearing or it is it like, or is it going so like a, far away if that you're I seeing, can't see it? If you're seeing a meteor shower, but I feel like that's different than a shooting star or maybe it's not. We don't know any of these answers. I know. Wow. We're really dumb. We should have looked into this, but um, I like shooting stars. I like to look at shooting stars. I've never thought I'm angry that someone else saw one, but I do know that I've been around people who lie about seeing shooting stars and I know whoa, they're lying. Oh, that's weird. What I, do you mean? Who? I, Oh, come on. You know who I'll even like, I'll call him out, but I'm, I'm not going to, but I, oh, would. Okay. but yeah, we were hanging out with someone once and he was like, Oh, shooting star. Oh, I saw another shooting star. Oh, I saw another. And it was like, obviously there's no way he saw that many shooting stars. You think he was lying? I know. I said he was, I was like, you're mm-hmm. lying. You obviously didn't see that many shooting stars. And in the same night, like an hour later, he was talking about how he had horrible vision and can't see anything. <laughs> and I was like, wait, so none of us have seen a shooting star. We're all looking up at the same sky and you've seen like six right. in 20 he minutes. He did say he'd saw like six in 20 minutes. Well, I, okay. And you say you have horrible eyesight. Besides the point. So I, that I think needs to relax. I people think, lie about yeah, if stars. you uh, see a shooting star, good for you and keep it to yourself. Don't go, huh, a shooting star. No, you like, should keep it to yourself. It's so difficult for me to like, I've, n- I've never ex- really experienced that. You should let that. people, you should be joyous that someone wants to 
um, express their excitement about seeing something so cool. I think it can bother me. I think it's okay. It can bother you, but I don't think you should say that they can't express excitement about it. Yeah. I'm, well, just around me don't, because I'm jealous that I've, I don't see them. Okay. Have not seen them. Well, if I see a shooting star around you, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, well, you can. I'll allow you to. Okay. Does no one else? D- yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're certain, are they like consecutive? What do you Another mean? question, because whenever like everyone says, oh, shooting star, then everybody looks and is trying to f- find one. I think it depends on the night, because like there are nights where there are meteor showers, and then you know you're going to see a bunch. So then they're not stars, they're meteors. Yeah, so it wouldn't be a shooting star. So then it? is are shooting stars stars ever? Or are they always meteors? I think we're progressively just sounding dumber and dumber. I feel like I have to look this up. It's like stressing me out. Okay, guys, shooting stars, they're not stars. As I'm sure everyone listening already knew this information when you and I are just the dumb ones, but they are meteors, which I feel like I kind of knew. And that's why we were kind of saying that, but like we didn't know. Anyway, shooting stars or meteors, Uh they're not shooting stars at all. They're meteors are caused by tiny specks of dust from space. These particles burn up 65 to 135 kilometers above earth. Is it kilometers? Kilometers. Yeah, definitely kilometers. I was like, kilometers sounds really (laughs) wrong. You're right. Is it kilometers? Kilometers. What's the difference between a kilometer and a kilometer? I think measurements. Wait, or is it the same thing, just pronounced differently? <laughs> this is supposed to make us look smarter, not dumber. Kilometers, kilometers and kilometers. I think that's the same word, just pronounced differently. It is. <laughs> oh my God. This episode should be called, We Are the Dumbest People to Ever Live. <laughs> that's fine. We are just looking really dumb right now. Yeah. Sorry. We're not, well, we've I never claimed to be scientists. I just feel like 29 kilometers per second doesn't sound that fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, is that the right word? Kilometers, kilometers, whichever way you pronounce it. Uh huh. Um, anyway, if Earth, oh wait, hold on. So they move, the particles burn up 65 to 135 km above Earth's surface as they plunge at terrific speeds into the sur- upper atmosphere, making the air glow as they pass. If Earth moves at 29 kilometers per second around the sun, oh, that's what I thought was slow. 29, uh, if Earth moves at 29 kilometers per second around the sun, these bits of dust are traveling at about 40 kilometers per second. When they enter our atmosphere, they have a combined speed of 30 to 70 kilometers per second. Well, wow, this is really boring. Okay, Sorry. so one kilometer is 3,280 feet. So it doesn't seem that long. That's, pr- that's a lot of feet. Yeah, I'm not impressed. Oh my gosh. Um, so anyway. Slowpoke. Uh, yeah, so it, it's just something that's going, it's, it's tiny specks of dust in space that burn up above the earth's surface as they plunge at terrific speeds, making the air glow as they pass. So it's a meteor burning up and making the air glow. That's kind of cool. It's really cool. I wish I was smarter. I was just, I was just bothered by people seeing shooting stars and I don't see a lot of them. Well, and maybe they're if you so proud. People are so proud more. to see them. Oh, yeah, but I didn't mean for you to like just read a whole article on. Uh, well, I was curious because we sounded so unbelievably stupid. Yeah. And uneducated, I was like, we need to like mm, read it aloud in an internet article aloud. on the podcast to sound smarter. No, it doesn't make it sound smarter. I it makes us so. sound like we're learning things that we That's learned. That's good. When yeah, we were that we want to grade. learn. That we're willing to learn and better ourselves. Okay, let's find out when the next meteor shower is. Okay. Okay. That way we can see one, and we can all, everyone listening to this, we're all going to agree the same time. Look up at the sky together. Wait, I think this is and not talk about all the shooting stars we see. Hold on a second. Is this real? I think. Okay. There's one pretty Tonight? close to us on, no, on Friday. So I won't be here. Well, you, you'll be on planet earth. There's one on your birthday. Okay. September 24th. At what time? It says eight to 11. Eight to 11. Let's all agree. Everyone In our listening. Area. So I don't know if like you can see it from the whole Pacific universe. T- standard time. Let's all agree to look up at the sky together. I could be wrong. I don't know that this is a... And see shooting stars. Yeah, how do you... I don't know, guys. Maybe that's what I'm missing, you know? Yeah, I don't know. In life. Anyway, tonight, Uh Mercury is going to be visible. Did you know that? Uh Uh-huh. That's interesting. (laughs) Now I'm just learning about the sky. This is going to get... This is like a space learning podcast yeah i just like i'm now i'm like so curious about all this stuff i have that sky app where you point your phone at the sky and it uh-huh. shows you like constellations and planets and stuff right so i do that some i've done that if, like three times in seven years that i've had that app whoa my mind's gonna explode okay so i someone someone it said people also asked this question when i googled it says is there a meteor shower tonight in 2022 is what 
a frequently asked question is. Uh -huh. The answer is the Perseid meteor shower in 2022 started on the 17th of July and will be visible until August 24th. They last that long? It's meteor showers? It peaks on the 13th of August. So it already peaked. Already passed. But She's still, peaked. that's really, I didn't know that meteor showers lasted months. Yeah, I don't think you know much about space. I literally know nothing. Yeah. I feel so, um, I'm so fascinated. I'm going to be searching this for a long time tonight. But, um, you know, we're pretty dumb, but you know who's not dumb? ZocDoc. ZocDoc, yeah. And I think we should talk about how they're not dumb, how they're awesome. I bet you if someone works for ZocDoc, like a, a medical professional, they probably know more about space than we do. I would say for I sure. I would definitely assume that. Mm -hmm. If your doctor can recite every line from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but can't remember your name, it's time to get a new doctor with ZocDoc. That was very specific. Whoever wrote Who's that part the jokes, of this- The uh, joke copy for Adrian ZocDoc. Here, That's funny. Um, had a very negative experience where a doctor <laughs> knew Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but didn't know their name. But you know what? Bueller. We've had issues where doctors didn't know our names. Bueller. Haven't we, love? Oh, yeah. I did have a doctor call me the wrong name once, and that was very weird. Very weird. Um, ZocDoc makes it easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Plus, with real verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you, one that actually remembers your name. And maybe he hasn't even seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right. if you're lucky. <laughs> I think most people have seen that movie. Have you seen that movie? Of course. Yeah. Um, so you used, you've used ZocDoc recently. I did, yeah. You I needed a uh, physical. And I was like, oh, this this would be really uh, easy because I need to find someone in, in my very specific, like niche uh, insurance uh, provider fold. And they were able to tell me exactly a list of doctors and their ratings and like on a map and that they were in my network of insurance. Yeah, it was it, I actually used it. It was really good. Yeah. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get that mole checked out. An achy down. back? Achy back. I'm pretty sure he's a nakey. I, or na I don't know. Someone's got nakey on the brain. Okay. <laughs> or, or you do. Okay. But I don't know. Okay. Get that mole checked out. Speaking of well. nakey, get the mole checked out. <laughs> Or anything else. ZocDoc's got you covered. <laughs> Literally covered. ZocDoc's mobile app is... that another joke is, in their copy? No, I made it. Oh, okay. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. You search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into that doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that is right for you, and book an appointment in person or remotely. That that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and we're one of them or two of them, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's our go-to now ever since Eric's incredible experience yeah. finding a doctor. So whenever we need someone, we can find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash relax and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash relax. ZocDoc.com slash relax. Why are you sitting so straight, lovely? I'm working on my posture. Sitting so tall over here. It's weird, right? Um, no, I mean, you look great. Thanks. Whether you're slouching or sitting up straight, you look great. Uh, you just don't seem very comfortable when you sit straight up. But I seem more confident. Sure. I don't know. Do you? I guess people say that, that when you stand up straight, you are sit up. Anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you want to know who I think needs to relax? Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. So we were just in Austin, Texas. And uh -huh. before that, a few days prior to that, I was in San Antonio and Houston for some shows. Yeah. Um, before that, I was in New Haven. And where else did we go? Boston. Boston. But I'm mostly... Specifically talking about Texas here. Texas do not, does not need to relax. I love Texas. It's great. It's fine. Um, what needs to relax is humidity. I'm sure I've talked about this. After 80 something episodes, I'm, I know we've talked about heat and how heat needs to relax. Weather needs to relax. Uh -huh. We've talked about all these things. So I'm sure I've already I don't know discussed that we've, this one. Uh, uh, spe specifically. That's such a hard word to say. Specifically said. Specifically called out humidity. I, I'm, I'm, I was By the way, I was just uh, rubbing Eric's back. It looked like I was pushing him to sit up straight. I wasn't. I was trying to get him to not be so far away she from me. She keeps telling me not to slouch on the podcast. <laughs> no, I never said that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have the worst posture in the world. Anyway, um, humidity needs to relax. Yes. I 
really hate humidity. And um, I don't like being super hot in general. Like I, I really hey, don't like being air. super hot. Why are you so wet? It's, I hate it. Like I prefer to be at 110 degrees and it's a dry heat, like a desert heat, like how we have in California, than being 85 degrees where it's 100% humidity. Is this because of your hair? No, it's not about my, I mean, that's annoying too. Like humidity does destroy my hair. No, it's that it's, you can't escape it when it's hot with humidity. Uh -huh. When it's a dry heat, you can at least like go in the shade. Go in the shade. And you feel a little bit cooler. Yeah. But like when it's humid, it just feels like you're walking through like a thick jello or oatmeal type consistency. And like the air feels thick. Yeah, I grew and up with this. So it's pretty normal to me, but I've been away from it living on the West Coast for over a decade now. That Yeah, it's pretty intense, wet air, it's, wet, hot air. It makes everything feel way, way hotter. Yeah. Like when it's humid, it feels a hundred times hotter. It was so humid in Austin that everything in our hotel room became wet. Yes. All of our clothes became like they all of our felt, clean clothes. Everything felt wet. Still in our suitcase or hung up. Everything was wet, like damp. It was really I hate weird. to say it, but moist. Yeah, it wasn't good. And I never knew anything about this kind of stuff until I became an adult because I grew up in Santa Barbara where it's pretty much just around the 70 in the 70s degree area all year round. But like when it's cold, you're cold. You're like, oh, it's 50 something degrees outside. I'm going to be a little chilly. Yes, that's cold to me, by the way. I know there are people out there probably laughing at me thinking 50 something degrees is cold. Yeah. But that's as cold as it got for me. Myself included. So like 56 degrees ish. Oh man, freezing to me. So that I'm like, oh, it's going to be cold. I remember Hot. going to like the, the school bus stop as a little kid and it being like below zero. Yeah. I never, and I'd have I to be waiting that. at a bus stop at 7 a.m. Right. Standing on ice. Yeah. I never experienced that. So for me growing up when it was like 50 something degrees, it was cold. And when it was 80 something degrees, it was hot. And it was, it felt what it said. If it said it's 85 degrees, it felt 85 degrees. If it said 57 degrees, it felt 57 degrees. Where I grew up, the temperature that it said is what it felt like. Mm. I didn't know that there were things like humidity and wind chill that made temperatures oh, be feel different than what hotter. it said. Yeah. And so then this is my question. I don't, I, again, I'm going to sound really stupid. So if there are any scientists listening to this episode, they hate us so much because this is what is annoying to me. When I lived in New York, it would be like, it's 34 degrees today with a wind chill of such and such. So it feels like right. five degrees. They're telling you. Yeah. But like, then why not just say it's five degrees? Because if it feels like five degrees, then isn't it five degrees? But that's not the temperature. It's not the, the scientific not? temperature of outside. I don't get that. Well, because like the measurements that are used to monitor temperature aren't human bodies. But if it feels like <laughs> a certain temperature, then isn't it that temperature? Uh, That's what doesn't make sense to me is it's like, it's 42 degrees, but it feels like 29 degrees. I'm like, well, then isn't it 29 degrees? Yeah, and, and the same and vice versa. They're like, it's 87 degrees, but with the humidity of this. So it's going to feel like. I mean, I guess they don't really say that with humidity. Like they only say it with wind chill. But they, but impl they imply, but the humi humidity. The humidity is going to be at this is, much yeah. at 100% or whatever it is. Um, anyway. That that's always bothered me because I'm like, because then it doesn't sound very impressive when you're like, oh, I had to walk 20 blocks a day in New York City to get to an audition. And yeah, it was, it was, 30, it was 30, 40 degrees, 40 degrees, but the wind chill factor. Yeah, because it's like you want to be like, like, and it was, it was four degrees. Yeah, at that point, I would just say it was four degrees. Well, but everyone knows the temperature, so they all know you're lying. But they, I'm sure they're factoring in the wind chill at that point. No, I think you have to say like the wind chill part. It just adds a lot of words you don't New York, mean. it's crazy. Like if it's like cold and windy, I can't. I think wind is my least favorite feature so, of weather. And I lived in, I was like, well, I went to school in Long you Island for a little bit. And it was like, Long Island was so windy in the winter that like the wind felt like knives, hate, like cold knives. You really hate wind. Hate wind. So scientists, can you explain to me, or just people with brains that are smarter than me, can you please comment and explain to me the humidity I get? Because humidity is like, okay, it's, it's 90 degrees, but the humidity is hundred percent. So like, you're just going to be hotter than normal, but it is 90 degrees. Okay. That one kind of makes more sense to me. The wind chill one doesn't make sense to me because like, how can it be 30 degrees, but it feels five degrees. I don't the, understand. It's so, so windy. But wouldn't a thermometer then feel like it's five degrees too? Why no, wouldn't a because thermometer it's using, feel like it's, it's cold? using like mercury to like mercury. measure. Mercury. That's how yeah. they measure temperatures. That's what's in thermometers. That's why you don't break thermometers and eat it because it could kill you. Cause there's like mercury in there. Well, and, I, get, I don't know about digital thermometers. Yeah, I don't know about this. I think we're just, oh man, we sound <laughs> so stupid today, guys. This I don't is know. embarrassing. I sound pretty smart. Um, anyway, I need the whole mercury I, please thing. someone explain it to me because I feel like if I walk outside and it feels 
five degrees, uh-huh. but it's only 30 degrees. How come a temperature wouldn't feel at five degrees? I get humidity because you can't, a thermometer can't feel wetness. I guess the thermometer can't feel wind, but wind, how does wind feel colder? Anyway, I don't get it. <laughs> I think this is pretty obvious, but you can how just, is it obvious? you can keep saying to me. the same exact Wait, sentence to me. If, over if and over again if you want. You, if it makes sense to you, can you explain it to me for real? Just, just base level. Yes. A temperature yes. is reading the temperature yes. of how cold or hot it is outside. I get that. And then they're factoring in the human experience mm-hmm. of cold wind and saying it's going to then feel this much colder because of the wind on your, like you have skin and nerves Mm -hmm. in your body. And they are, um, these receptors are telling your mind, Ooh, I'm colder than 34 degrees. But that doesn't make any sense to me because, but I don't know how they exactly, uh, you know, what the math equation is vis-a-vis wind to temperature where they come up with wind chill factors. Well, they come up with it because they say, it feels like this. So they know that it feels five degrees. Because <laughs> well, somebody, somebody studied weather in college. Yeah, so then why don't they say, because this is what I don't get. Like Meteorologists. They are saying on the weather channel, this is what the temperature is outside. Right. Correct? They're saying that so that we know how cold it feels. So why not just, if they know that the wind chill is making it feel five degrees why don't they say it's five I degrees outside? I can't believe you're outside. picking on me because I just didn't, didn't want to know about your shooting stars. You. I'm not but picking on you. Okay. I'm, I'm picking on me. I don't understand it. <laughs> I feel stupid uh-huh. because if, if on the weather channel, they're using degrees and temperatures of Fahrenheit and Celsius to tell us how hot or cold it is outside. Yeah. Why wouldn't they say how cold so it feels? Because so we're humans. So you're meteorologists to relax because they need to just stick to the script. Just tell me what the thermometer no, says. No, I don't want them to they're, stick to the script. They're looking out for you. They want you, they want you to know. I don't want them to skip, hey, stick to the script. Hey, look, look, your temperature thing in the dashboard of your car is telling you it's 34 degrees, but just so you know, it's pretty windy out there. It's going to feel like it's like four degrees. So put on that extra layer. I know, but why doesn't the thermometer, that's what, that's the part I don't get. Because it's a thermometer. Why doesn't a thermometer It's not a feel, wind gauge. But why, how come it feels colder for us because we're thermometer. human beings. But, oh, I don't get it. Whose bodies are regulating their body temperature to 98.6 degrees and we're warm blooded. We're not lizards. Yes, so we feel cold when it's cold, but it's, I don't understand why. I oh, never mind. I don't think I can articulate what I'm trying to say. I don't think I'm able to t- articulate what You're, I'm asking. You are articulating correctly. fine. I totally get it. I'm just, I'm just looking out for one of my friends studied weather in college. I know. Yeah. He's awesome. He'd yeah. probably be able to, we should call him. He'd be able to explain it to me. Uh-huh. Oh, guys, I feel really dumb. So should I try and call him? To, uh, no. Do you think he'll I don't pick Because clearly I'm not wording it correctly. So don't call him because I'm not wording uh, yeah. my question correctly. I don't think I'm making sense. But yeah, I'm just trying to say like, I don't understand why they're saying that the temperature is 34 degrees, but it feels so much colder to us. And you can't just say, oh, it's the wind because- well, a thermometer, a wind is going to hit a thermometer. So why doesn't the thermometer pick up the coldness of the wind? Like, mm-hmm. so the, you're saying the, the wind is colder than the temperature outside, but the wind is outside with the temperature. So I don't get it. You see what I'm saying? No. Okay. Whatever. Everyone listening to this uh, podcast. I'll just stop. It's now smarter. All right. Um, no, you're doing, you did great. I didn't, I never mind. Okay. Are I'm you just, frustrated? No, I'm frustrated with myself that I can't figure out how to word what is confusing I me. I understand. You're mocking me now. No, I'm doing what we do to our kids. Are you frustrated? Do you want to tell me about your feelings? No, you're making fun of me. I'm not. I love you. You know who would never make fun of me? Case Defy. And that's our (laughs) next sponsor. Um, You guys, we can't be the only ones out here dropping our phones all the time. Like everyone drops their phones, right? That's why you get a case for your phone to protect the thing. Babies throwing our phones. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Why is that baby's favorite toys just holding our phones? The most germy, germy thing in the world. just chucking it. But you know, it's annoying when you get a case. You don't want one that's like super bulky or ugly, some lame little plastic thing that's going to make our phone look bad. We want something sleek, slim, and truly protective. That's why we have Case Defy. This is my Case Defy case. Yes, Eric's Case Defy case is on right now. It is Cutesy Town, USA. I like you that it's that it says on the side of the uh, of this case. This case is made from recycled phone cases. That is correct. So they found they're like reusing old phone cases and making new ones that like are functional and look cool. Yes. 
I like um, this. This one's called like the acid smiley face it's or really something. Cute. I really like it. Put protection, sustainability, and style together, and that is Case Defy. Case Defy's ultra impact crush cases are some of the most protective, unique cases on the market. Engineered with EcoShock, Case Defy's latest protection tech, their newest iPhone 14 Impact Series is 20% more protective and just as slim. Their cases are optimized for protection up to 11.5 feet at five times the military standard, withstanding drops up to 130 times. But it's not just about protection. They've got a large range of prints and designs created by our diverse community of artists. So there's something for everyone. You can also design your own customized cases Mm -hmm. so the options are truly endless. With strong built-in magnet, the cases are also MagSafe compatible and attaches seamlessly to any MagSafe item. And they're sustainable as well. Their cases are developed. Oh, someone's calling. Someone's there. calling on my case to find oh my case gosh. phone right now. And they're sustainable as well. Their cases are developed from 65% recycled and plant-based material, as well as being partially made from upcycled phone cases through their Recasetify program. Get one of the most protective, cool-looking, and environmentally friendly phone cases the internet has to offer. Go to casetify.com and use our code 15RELAX, or use the link in our description box to get 15% off your Casetify order. That's 15% off with our code 15RELAX at casetify.com. Can we stop talking about how stupid I am now? I feel uh, no one said I just, that. No, I'm I'm saying it. So let's let's. Move I think on you're to a so topic. smart in so many things. Not in space. Not in space and not in weather. Nah, not not smart in science. Science was always my worst subject. I always had a 4.0, sometimes a 4.1 mm-hmm. GPA. Um, I was always very intelligent. However. I'm not, I'm not saying like smart, smart. Like I actually was really dumb when it came to test taking. I'm really bad at taking tests, but in all my classes, I figured out a way if I didn't understand something or I was bad at something, I would try to get creative and talk with a teacher about a different way. Like if I was having a hard time with a a paper, I'd be like, can I make a video for this instead? Or, you know, like I, I, I liked learning and and figuring things out in that way. But science was the one class I could uh-huh. never get an A in. And I tried well, so Well, I think you have the best hard. brain. You have my favorite brain. It's not a big enough brain for science, though. I am I was, so envious I was of scientists. Math, I couldn't. Like, I just, once it got to, like, physics and geometry even, I was like, ah, no. I mean, I'm, what am I going to do with this? Yeah, I, I liked me. math. It was really hard for me, but I enjoyed it because it reminded me of, like, music theory. So well, I enjoyed I it. I science. I could, just couldn't get into science. I wanted to. Yeah. I love science now. I just don't understand it. Anyway... Um, moving on. Sure. You said you had a few things to talk about. I, well, I had other like relax, like relax items. Um, oh, we were at a wedding, uh, recently. Actually our producer of relax, Eric's brother, Chris, he just got married. Congratulations, Chris and Nicole. And we went to their wedding and it we was did. so fun. We went so fun in Texas and, and went to a wedding. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. That was something about that was on here. You want to talk about it? I mean, so I was going to say giving speeches at weddings. Eric gave a speech at the wedding and it was a great speech. It was a fabulous speech. I didn't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like last minute, like, Hey, can you, the night before, can you fill in and do it and do the speech the night before? Um, and it's something about it is so stress. I had done it once before I was best man and my best friend from childhood's wedding. And I had to give like the best man speech. And there is something about, and I've seen it at every other wedding I've been to the, the guy who the best man who has to give the speech, they put so much pressure on themselves and everybody puts so much pressure on them. I don't know if it's like that for maids of honor or I don't know. Is, uh, uh, fathers of the bride, the, pe- the other people who traditionally give speeches at weddings. But there's something about like that specific speech where everyone's like, Oh, you gotta be, sorry, you gotta be funny. You gotta be that, you know, this and, and you, and like everybody's kind of waiting for you to crash and burn. Uh, that and is they not all, true. Love. Yeah. Cause even at the, no even at like the bachelor, crash and burn. even at crazy. the bachelor weekend, everyone was talking about other weddings that they had been to this summer and what that, best man speech was and how horrible it was, or it was good because of this, or it was terrible because of this, like there's so much pressure on it. Truly. Okay. From my perspective. That's fine. And, um, I'm and just I saying, love I don't my think, brother so much that I, I wanted just, it to be I good. Can I please interrupt you? Yeah. I don't never think, stop. I don't think anyone is going to a wedding and hoping or waiting for the best man to crash and burn during their speech. I don't think anyone's thinking about that. Well, it's always kind of a mess because you're like, how drunk is this person going to be? You know what I mean? Or how nervous or. 
Uh, like, are they going to take it too far with their jokes? Are they going to try and like roast the person or the couple? Like, you know, like, is it going to be, I don't know. There's always things like that, right? I guess I feel like the weddings I've been to, I'm just like, oh, they're going to make a speech. I don't think anything about it. And I've no? made speeches at, I've been made of honor in people's weddings and I've made speeches and I don't think I thought anything of it. I just stood up and talked about how much I love them. And like, I didn't yeah, think anything of it. I think that's it. what maids of honor traditionally do. And I think the same thing with like father of the bride is it's like more like sentimental. Like those are more like sentimental, I think. Mm -hmm. But like the best man one is you're kind of supposed to be like the right amount of drunk. So that, you know what I mean? You and you're are, supposed to I, have like, you know, you're supposed to thank the parents of, or whoever's paying for this. And, you know, you're supposed to then like make a joke about that. You know, there's a, there's a formula here that's been established what? through generations. And then, and you're supposed to get like insider joke laughs. And then, um, you know, you're going to wrap it up with something sentimental and sweet. And this all was very organic and genuine because I had like no time to, to prepare um, but it made me, it gave me such anxiety to have yes. to, for me, yeah, I know I'm like an actor and, and, and we're, here we are, I'm talking on a podcast, but like to be myself in front of people that I know and love and have that responsibility to, to, to represent my family and toast to them uh, on their wedding day, everyone's dressed up. There's like all these wedding photographers clicking at you. Like, I, you know what I mean? They're like a videographer. Like it's, yeah, it's a very nerve wracking. It's like, yes. and so to speak as myself and, yeah. and, and, uh, it's what it, what it feels like is, is if, Hey, we know you're not a stand up comedian, but why don't you come up with a stand up comedian, um, routine, a, a solid five minutes in less than 24 hours and then do it immediately in front of a crowd without like figuring out what jokes work or don't work or and you should understand this like massaging the bits so that it like can play you know and be really like genuine and sentiment i don't know like that whole form i'm talking about but like i'm not a stand-up comedian and nobody and i would imagine um, like less than one percent of people who give best man speeches are stand-up comedians mm -hmm. But, right. they're, but they're asked kind of to do this and they're judged accordingly. They're judged no, that, to that that's standard. That's the part I don't agree with you on. I mean, wedding audiences are, I guess, good audiences because most people at that point are like, just having I've already fun. had cocktail and like, they're hour happy. or whatever. They're happy to be at a wedding. The wedding's about the couple that's in love and and No, it's about wedding. me. And, and <laughs> I don't think anyone is going into a wedding being like, ah, well, glad that ceremony's over. I can't wait for this best man speech. Well, like, I don't like, think anyone's thinking about like it. There's like the DJ and then the, and there's like the, you know, the dances that they have to do and, or they want to do. And the, uh, and then there's uh, the speeches that are just like, like a the part of it. The speeches are like the thing. It's like, what let's are you watch. Saying? That is not true. It but, is love. No. When you go to a wedding, when I think about the festivities of a wedding, obviously it's like the wedding, the ceremony. No, you're like, but oh, that speech was that never, speech. Never. No, be? you think about I'm them kidding. cutting the cake. You think about the first dance, yeah. the father daughter dance. Like yeah. those are the things you think about. The bou bouquet toss. Like no one's like the best man speech. Was, like no one thinks about I that. I think they are. I think they're like, it was so bad. You know what I mean? Like I think. What? Are, no, this is all in your head. I've, well, I've thought these things at so other weddings. You, this is how you feel at weddings when you go to weddings. You think about just the best man speech the whole time. You like look forward to this. Well, look forward to seeing if it's ago good or not. When I had to give that best man speech, it was a while ago. He got married like fairly young. And it's, and I just remember it was, it was, it was so stressful. Yes, it, it is stressful. I, yeah, it, of course it's stressful uh, it's to do so, a speech. It's so nerve wracking to like to give, you know, public speaking. You know what I mean? And it's not, it's not in the same ballpark as what I do professionally because I get to pretend to be someone else and read someone else's words. Like this is like, I have to say my words and be myself in front of all these people. I know it's, it was just, it's just a very different animal, like mm -hmm. all together. Um, well, well, but I was so, I was like honored to be asked and happy to do it. Um, but that doesn't mean that those, those fears. Well, yeah, that's, and that's what I'm trying away. to say. I'm not saying like, you're wrong. Everyone, you know, I, I'm saying that's in your head for you personally, because, um, like that's how you felt people were thinking, but I'm trying to reassure you and saying like, nobody was thinking that everyone was just there to have a good time and be there for Chris and Nicole. And we're happy to hear you speak, whether it was funny or, or not. Cause like, think about before you knew you were going to make a speech, uh -huh. were you going to that wedding going like, Oh, that best man speech. I wonder if, the person who's going to make it is going to crash and burn. Yeah. Or were you just like, I'm going to a wedding? You didn't think about it. And if, and if you weren't making a speech, like you've been to a lot of weddings where you weren't making a speech, 
Are you thinking about the best man speech and hoping he's going to crash and burn I'm the whole sitting time? There, I'm not hoping he's going to, but I'm thinking, well, this is not good. What? <laughs> They're hard to do. They I think are it's a really, do, I, I think it's I an impossible, I, I think it's like, like an impossible task. Love. To ask some, to ask like. What happened to you that what made you have so much pressure on best man speeches? I, I just think, think people I, just enjoy them. I just them. witnessed people talking to them and been in conversations about them and been a part of them. And I just maybe think it's, I'm, it's like maybe that. Maybe I'm for, totally wrong. Just um, tell me, I guess they'll tell me. They'll tell me in the comments like, yes, Colleen, actually everyone thinks about the best man speech at weddings is the only I thing people care about. No, I'm not saying, I'm certainly not saying that at all. And I'm not <laughs> trying to make it at all about myself. I'm just saying like my, it kind of changed my experience of this wedding because like I was you so, were very anxious. so anxious about it um and was so happy when it was over yeah. that i danced with a flower crown on my head you were with so happy. you and our son um but it was great your speech was so great oh you're it so was, sweet it was funny it was sentimental it was lovely and your brother gave another great speech and the maid of honor made a great speech and her dad made a great speech it was a wonderful speeches and yours was fabulous it was very funny yours was like the funny one it was great um yeah, but it was, should we be putting that much pressure on our friends and family to do that at weddings? Should that have to relax? I don't think anyone is putting pressure on it. I think that you're doing that to yourself. Yeah. Because there wasn't any pressure. Actually, I remember I was there when you were asked. And they said no and pressure? And they said, absolutely no pressure. You do not have to do this. But we I'm, would like for you to do this, but uh -huh. it's okay. I know it's last minute. Oh, you don't had, have to know pressure. Yeah, I had I'm to. just saying that they specifically the circumstance, said the circumstance no pressure. Being what it was, I absolutely had to. And we're to. very understanding if you did not. Like yeah. they were so And I'm sweet sure I could have said anything and, and he would have loved yes. and appreciated it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the pressure that we put on ourselves yes. in those in those situations. Um, but I, I can't think of any other, like I get nervous on Thanksgiving when people are like, let's all go around the table and say what we're thankful for. I'm like, okay, three more people. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. am I going to say that I'm thankful for? I don't know. Right. And, you know, they get to you and you're like, uh, you want it to be like, good. like a table of like 12 people. Like you're literally, you're like your actual family, family members. Family. Yeah. Well, and also like I read, I see TikToks all the time of, um, people who go like, are, are, are you the kid in school who, when they're going around the class reading, you've reread your paragraph, you've counted out to find out which paragraph yeah, was, you're going to read and you've read it in your head 18 times to yeah. make sure you know what you're going to say. I was that kid, mm -hmm. you know, an interesting, I don't know if that's an interesting story, but like when we were doing, that's how I kind of got encouraged to be an actor is because we were reading Richard the third or Macbeth or something like that in like seventh grade English class. And it got to my paragraph and I, and I read it and then the teacher stopped me after class and was like, hey, like you were really good at that. You should audition for the school play. They were also directing the school play. But that's like one of the first encouragements I got was because of that. But I can tell you, I was reading it ahead of time. And I was terrified as they're going down the road, getting to my desk and I had to read. I was always terrified from that too, but not, I wasn't like reading it to make sure I sounded great. I would read the paragraph to make sure I knew how to pronounce all the words. Uh -huh. Cause that was my biggest fear is that there'd be a word in my paragraph that I didn't know how to pronounce right. and everyone would think I was stupid. Mm -hmm. So I didn't care about how I, how I performed. Yeah. I oh, just okay. wanted it to be over with. So I would just read it I very wasn't monotone. About I, I just was reading Shakespeare lines and they were like, oh, you managed to make that sound believable or something. Mm -hmm. You're good at that. Um, well, well what, your, your speech was great. Do you have, I mean, I know you, you tour with a one woman show as yourself and a very famous character that you created. Do you, is there any other times you've had like public speaking engagements oh, yes. where you were like, if you have to like, um, give a talk, Yes, I've had are to. Are you more nervous than you are performing your of show? Of course. Yes. Not oh my rehearsed. God, yes. I hope you weren't thinking or like that in I was... an interview, like when you do like, when you've done like Jimmy Fallon, are you like terror? Are you pissing yourself? Yeah, I'm dead. I'm not a human being. It's awful. Uh -huh. So I'm, yeah, of course. Ryan I, and Kelly, you don't care. But Jimmy Fallon, you were nervous. I'm right. joking. Well, I was nervous for all of them. Right. Always. Yeah, no. But I wasn't trying to discredit you being nervous. Uh -huh. I, of course you were nervous. I would be so nervous if I had to make a speech at a wedding. Like, of course you're freaking nervous. Like that's so nerve wracking. I was so nervous. Anytime I've ever done, I'm nervous for my shows, first of all, and any kind of performance, but like, yeah, I did a master class and that was terrifying. Where did and you do a master? Like, I think in Rhode Island somewhere. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. It's a pretty small um, state, Rhode Island. You can't be more specific. I really don't remember where. Um, and I did, um, I've done speaking events. I, I took a a public speaking class in college. I hated that. Did you have to like um, publicly yes. like speak in front of your class, class all the time? And, talk. and I never did that. um, I had to, I've had to, 
yeah, speak. I hate doing that. That's not fun. I, I don't mind it when it's like a question answer thing. Like if someone was just like interview me, that's kind of fun. But yeah, talk shows. No way. I'm very nervous for talk shows. Mm-hmm. Those are very scary because you have a very small amount of time with them. You don't get to hang out with them before they already plan, by the way, on talk shows, they plan ahead what you're going to talk about. So anytime you watch a talk show and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so funny that he brought this up. Oh, it's so funny that that person brought yeah. up this thing with her and she's so embarrassed. Like, no, no, no. They, they have phone meetings with you or your team prior to you going, asking you questions, trying to find the right topics to bring up Fascinating, yeah. in the talk show. And everything they talk about is pre-planned and they all know about it. Right. So like if someone's been like, cards. oh, tell me about this boyfriend of yours. And like, oh my God, I can't believe you showed that picture. Like they sent them the picture to show it. Right. So like, I mean, may, I'm not talking for everyone. You know, maybe that's not true. But right. like in my experience and I've done Fallon three times, I've done, what else have I done? Um, Stephen Colbert, I remember. You Colbert, were nervous for that one. I was very nervous for that. Um, and Kelly the and View. Ryan, I've done The View. Um, all Yeah, everything is very much, well, The View, Rosie I mean, that's O'Donnell more conversation. show? <laughs> I wish. I loved that Maury show. Maury Povich? No. Um, but The View obviously was more Dr. conversational. Dr. Phil? It's not scripted. I don't want you guys to think it's scripted. It's not scripted. It's just like every topic is pre-planned. Um, that nothing is like a surprise. Yeah. Unless, I mean, I, I guess there could be situations where like, the famous person's team was like, oh, we were going to surprise her and do this. But like, yeah, they, so maybe I know that's that true. happens too. Maybe. I don't know. But with me, I've always known everything that they're going to talk about. They always tell me ahead of time. Anyway, speaking of ahead of time, um, uh, that work? speaking of ahead of time, you want to make sure your head is always cozy in life so that you have a cozy mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Helix is our next sponsor. Does it? Anyway. um, It's a good mattress. What else do you need to know? Guys, how long have you had your mattress? Tell me. It's been too long. Because we had a mattress for a really long time. But then Helix. Too long. We got one from Helix. But then we got one from Helix. So like a year and a half we have had it. And uh, it's fabulous. Yeah. Our sleep is better. I mean, we don't really sleep, but when we do, it's better. Right. Because of the mattress. Our lack of sleep is not because of our mattress. Those cat naps. Little Mm -hmm. cat naps we take. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, And it's a great Helix mattresses. Our kids love them. Our kids love to to sleep on our mattress. Um, We love to sleep on our mattress. Far and few between the moments that we get to do that. Uh But cats. Cats love to sleep on the mattress. Everyone loves it. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own house. And that is why they offer a hundred nights risk free, a little trial there for you. Uh, But like a hundred nights. Yeah. You can try it out. Try out that new Helix mattress. You can do stuff in that mattress for a hundred nights. And uh, you can see how your body adjusts to it. See Uh if you feel better, if you're sleeping better. And if you decide it's not the best fit, you can return it for a full refund, but you're probably going to keep it because you're going to love it. I would assume you've had the mattress for three, over three months at that point. Um, Everyone's unique. Yeah. Everyone sleeps differently. And that's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from. Each model is designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. We matched um, We matched with the Midnight Lux. Models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side, which is what we do. Mm-hmm. Hello. Models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, plus enhanced cooling features, which I love, to keep you from overheating at night because I hover- overheat sleep every night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's a perfect combination of comfort and support. We took the Helix Sleep Quiz and we are matched with the Midnight, Midnight Lux. Lux model. Good name. Because we Good sleep on our side. Yeah. It's pretty firm and it's fabulous. Um, yeah, so like we said, it helps us to sleep better. Yeah, um, who doesn't want to sleep don't better? Don't want to get out of bed? Take, take the quiz. And um, not only is the mattress just absolutely fabulous, but the setup is super fast and easy. Helix mattresses are delivered in a box and straight to your door for free. And Helix mattresses are American made and come with a 10 or 15 year warranty, depending on the model. And remember, you get to try it out for 100 nights risk free. If you don't love it, and I know you're going to love it, but if you don't, 
they will um, pick it up for you and give you. They'll a pick refund. it up. I was oh, just yeah. gonna say it's so hard to get rid of a mat. Like They're where do you pick it put up, them? Honey bun. Where do you put a mattress? They're pick yeah. that up. Don't want to take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress pick by GQ and Wired Magazine. It's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash RCE. That's um, relax, Colleen, Eric, RCE. Oh. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Nice. You came up with that? I have some more things to talk about I'm that sure I would like to talk about on our podcast where we talk. Okay. Um, I would like to say you're welcome to Thank people you. riding on planes, arriving in hotels. If they arrive there and there is a phone charger already in the wall <laughs> or uh, charging under your seat next to your seat it in the plane is Eric's. because I compulsively leave phone changers like little chargers. Little Johnny Appleseed of phone chargers just sprinkling them around the world for other people. What did I say? Changers. Char- <laughs> Chargers <laughs> all over the planet for, uh, for, I guess for other people, I'm like a little phone charger fairy, just leaving them around for anyone who needs, because I just seem to need to charge my phone. And then when I'm leaving, absolutely compulsively leave it there. Yes. Never to be seen again. Why, why do I do this? It's like, I have a, like, remember a long time ago, I talked about ketchup blindness, how mm-hmm. I can't find ketchup in a fridge. Mm-hmm. I feel like I also have like phone charger blind, where I just, I can't, once I've, once I've unplugged it from my phone, I can't see it anymore. Mm-hmm. It like blends in with the wall and outlet. Right. And there it stays. I am so proud of you. What? <laughs> For admitting I'm that? I'm so proud of you, love. <laughs> this is a really big step in our relationship. What is? Why? I'm always blamed for you not having... You always, I, since the history I of our entire... Or something? Like, yes, you're always like, you took my phone. It's always... This is my... Aggressively, you... you accusing me of come stealing... Come to Jesus moment about that. Yes, I... And I always have the same response. It's been me the whole time. <laughs> I, and I know it has been. But because my response is always the same. My phone charger, I don't unplug it. It stays in the wall at all times. I don't move it. I don't... If I need to charge my phone, it is getting charged in that place. I don't move it. I don't change it around. And... When I take it on trips, I'm very specific with where it goes in my bag. And I'm very specific about taking it back and putting it right back in the mm-hmm. wall when I get home. Because otherwise I will forget it and lose it. Like I've had uh-huh. to train my brain to do this. And Eric's, I, and I always explain this to him. I was like, nope, my phone charger is exactly where it's supposed to be. It's the only place I charge my phone. And I was like, like, you a took different it. Kind of phone and you charger. always go, well, my phone charger was right here and now it's not. <laughs> like to be like, and so obviously like hey, implying you obviously to, moved it. I'm trying to say like, I wasn't even talking about us, but I am sorry no, about that. I, you don't have to apologize. I'm just so proud of you that I know it's hard for you to admit that like you actually lost something. Yeah. I lost a lot of them because yeah. we just got back from that trip and I left uh, two Phone chargers in two different hotels. Oh my God. Love. How did that even happen? One of them I had just bought because I had left the other one and then I left that one too. I don't know how. The only time I've ever not left a phone charger in a hotel I've stayed in is because you've been like, okay, I'm going to do one last check. And you look at all the outlets and you see my yes, phone charger exactly, and you say, I always do your one phone last charger. Check. you've also done this to me on planes. Mm-hmm. I just don't think about it. I got other things to worry about, I guess. Well, I used to do that too. And then I got sick of it because it's like very scary because I used to travel alone. And to travel alone without a phone charger is terrifying. Yeah, what were we doing Um, before cell phones? And so I, now it's like part of my routine in my brain, like that I search, I'll forget things from the house. Like when I'm packing to go somewhere, I'll forget a bunch of stuff. But once I'm at a hotel, like my brain clicks into this, like, I know exactly how to pack and where to put things in the hotel so that I don't forget them. And I make myself double check everything in the room. Yeah. Like under the bed, under the pillows, under the sheets. And there's like, I- To make sure there's not people hiding under there? No, to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, oh, I thought you meant when you're leaving, not when you, when you get there, you're not checking under no, the no, bed. No, 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 when I'm leaving. If you checked under the bed, it'd be one of my phone chargers probably that I had probably. left there beforehand. Probably one of mine, because that's another thing is you often take mine and lose them. I, here's the thing. There's not a I'll, phone charger- I, that there's not the charger that goes with this computer in this office. That's for exactly, our podcast. It is not exist. Even though I've told Eric a thousand times, on me now. I say, do not take this charger. It is for the mouse and for the keyboard. Don't take it. It's not for our phones. And he's taken it so many times. And I know that in your brain, you're like, I'll just put it right back. She'll never know. And you never remember to. Well, because and then I can't it's gone. find, I can't. F- Here's the thing. I've never taken a full phone charger from you, but I've taken components. I know. Whether, whether it be the cord or the base of the cord, the plug, but I've never taken both. Did you say based? 
base. Oh, I thought you said the base of the cord. And I was like, oh, that's not the you're same. You're really word. looking for me to mess no, up I'm right not. now. I'm, yeah, you're being I'm real so nitpicky. I'm so proud of you for admitting that. Thank you. It's a very big deal. It is a big deal. And um, I love you. I've never taken one of your phone chargers. Uh huh. Even though I've been accused of it many a time. You've left them, love. Well, I've taken okay. your components. And I know that the one that goes to your computer is in my car. Is it? Mm-hmm. Or is it in a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, I'm very proud of you, Lovey. Thanks, What else love. did you want to talk about today? Uh, Eric, th- Eric came in today like, I have a few things I really need to talk about. So, Oh, this is, I don't know. This is really strange to me. I'm spending a lot of time on highways recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've noticed that it's, it's, um, it's more common when I look over at another driver. It's more common now. To see that other driver holding their cell phone up next to their face as they're driving and looking at their phone than it is to look over at someone and they're just driving. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so wild. So dangerous and And so so dangerous. Also illegal. And I'm driving around with three little babies in my car and I don't want to look over at you not looking at the road, looking at just looking at your phone. Uh, I just think it's, if you're doing that, if you, if you're just doing that casually or you're like, oh, maybe I do do that. Just don't, don't do that. Like driving is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. You can listen to music or set up the Bluetooth or whatever, but like, don't be looking at your, like on the highway. Yeah. You're on the highway going at like 75 miles an hour. And I've seen people like they're like looking at tick like Instagram or TikToks. Oh they're just like they're not even like it's not like they're talking to someone or looking at directions yeah. even like they're or like yeah texting awful. But like some people are just like what are they just that bored while operating a motor vehicle? I just think it's so crazy how how often I see it now. Mm-hmm. So I was just like oh I'm just gonna whatever it's not funny, but I'm just gonna like say it out loud on this just in case like maybe one person listening is like oh yeah I'm, I'm gonna, gonna yell at that person for looking at the phone that. or I'm not gonna look at my yeah. If we're talking about safe driving. What happens, I've noticed a lot, and I feel like this this drives me bananas, is I can't believe how many people will say, like, they'll go out drinking and they'll say, like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, that that's, makes yeah. me rage. You're never angry. good. Don't do like, that. Like, if you've had alcohol, you can figure out another do not way. drive. Like, we have Ubers, we have Lyfts. You must have a friend who's not had anything. That makes me so crazy. Yeah. Like... That I get, I get very, that scares me a lot. I know people that that has affected and like, that is just very scary to me. So Same like, with the phone stuff. No, no, no phone phones, and driving. No drinking and driving. Uh, no phones and driving. Yeah. No drinking and driving guys. That's scary. And also no Colleen driving. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah, no Colleen driving, especially if there's like curbs around and generally speaking in roadways and parking lots, there's lots of curbs. So if you like the way the, the wheels to your car look, no Colleen driving. Yeah, no. This is not, that's not a good, that's, it's like, not, you're that's like, not safe The way you can then. tell like you're close to the curb is like you wait till you hit it, I feel. I just have a bad idea of like depth perception or like the, the what's it called when like the, how big the car is, like how, like, you know what I mean? Like when you feel, when you uh-huh. know the space. Spatial awareness. Spatial when awareness when of, a, vehicle? of a vehicle. Uh-huh. I, that stresses me out. Like I don't understand how big or little a car is once I'm in it. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> It just, it's just like too scary. I'm like, I either will overshoot it or that, undershoot like, it. Goes out the window. Like you see well, a car, you're about to get in. You're like, oh, it's this size. But once you get in it, you have no idea. Well, here's the deal. They love. have cameras if you, and sensors on them now. If you, if, I don't trust those. I can't look. I'm an old person. In so that you sense. trust your intuition, which is. I don't trust any of it. Okay. I trust nothing. Yeah. Um, But if you've been with me and I've parked and I've hit a curb, it's because my last experience where I was driving, which probably wasn't recent from the time I am driving because I never drive. Uh But my most recent experience to have hitting that curb that I just did in the car with you, like let's say I'm parking and I hit the curb. That was the last time I drove. I parked like three feet from the curb and Uh I was so embarrassed and I had to get back in the car and then try again. And so that means that. The next time I park, I'm like, well, I was three feet last time away from it. So I got it. Yeah. And then I'll hit the curb. And then the next time I'll be parked three or four feet away. I like, I'm very, driving is scary to me. It's a huge You only drive vehicle. when you're car sick. You're like, oh, I feel car sick. I yeah. need to drive. Mm-hmm. That's the only time you really drive. Driving is really hard for me. I, uh-huh. It's not that it's the driving itself is hard. It's hard for my brain to focus on just driving. I get so bored that my brain starts thinking of a million things. And I start well, at least planning you're not drunk or looking mind. at your phone. I know, but my brain just like goes to another land and like, that's really, it's really, really hard for me to focus on just driving. 
Yeah. And it's also incredibly boring. Like I despise, I think it is the most boring activity in the world driving. I hate it. So I, I, I sometimes like driving. I think it's all about smiles per gallon. You not miles per gallon. Do you gallon, not remember that last week gallon. your relax was like when you're in a car, you have basically road rage and you're like, I love driving this week. Sometimes but last I week do. You, I said sometimes. You've never liked driving, love. I sometimes like driving. No, you don't. I sometimes do. You are lying. It's me. I love I'm you so much. I'm truth. not bickering. We're not bickering, guys. Uh, I don't know. That is like not driving. the truth, love. You've never enjoyed driving. You, I do ever, know. I like, I love I like you my so car much. now. I, like, I love your car. Yeah. So, like, sometimes I'm telling you. So, now sometimes I'm like, oh, it's nice to. I'm like excited to, uh, to drive. Like when we got home from that trip, I was like excited to, to drive my car just to go to the store. Hmm. I just feel like every time you've ever driven the whole time, you're just like complaining about other drivers around you. You're complaining about driving. Well, yes, Cause like I get to like hate driving. complain and you know, be frustrated and it's okay. It's understandable. <laughs> it's like my safe space it's to be so funny super to be grumpy. That you're like, I hate driving. I it's hate to say this. And then today you're space. saying you like driving. It's yeah, just, a, it go back and forth. it's a lie. Yeah. Okay. So, you, okay. I'm, we're not bickering guys. We love each other very much. This is not bickering. We're not fighting. Don't get mad. I'm just calling him out on being a liar. That's fine. That's fair. Um, anyway, <laughs> you know, who's not a liar, our next sponsor, but also you, you're not a liar. I was just busting. I know. Testicles as they say. Busting testicles. You know, don't they say I'm just busting your balls? Yeah. Why do people say that? Just busting your balls, man. What do you want them to say? I don't know. Because well, busting balls means I'm like joking around. Right. But I'm like just busting me- just balls does not you. sound like a joke. That sounds like it would be very, very painful hurt. and not yeah. funny at all. That sounds like I don't like know a- where uh, that came from. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about busting balls right before uh, we talk about a sponsor, huh? <laughs> Maybe that's not a good idea. You know what who I'm doesn't trying- bust your balls? No, you know, what I'm trying to say is that I was just joking around with you. I love you. I love you too. I don't think you're a liar. You're the most honest, wonderful person I've ever known. And I'm very much in love with Thank you. you. I was Lily. just joking around. I'm very around. much in love with you too. Um, I was just joking, guys. Anyway, you know what I'm not joking around about? You want to know? Vegamore. Vegamore. Guys, we have tried everything to get silky, strong, healthy hair. When we say everything, we mean everything. Everyone wants silky, strong, beautiful hair, you right? Put mayonnaise in your hair as a kid? Wasn't that something uh, people definitely did? Definitely not. I no? never did that. I feel like I heard of people putting mayonnaise in their hair. Hmm. Interesting. I guess there are like mayo hair masks and right. things I've heard of. Um but I've never done one of those. I've never done one of those, but I have like tried so many different products. I've tried products that are like highly recommended. Right. And then I try them and I'm like, uh, that just made my hair feel like straw. Didn't right. work at all. Um, well, Vegamore is great. And if you have tried a bunch of weird products in your hair to try to get that smooth, silky, strong feeling, you might love Vegamore. So you should give it a try like we did. In fact, um, there was some Vegamore uh, products in my kitchen the other day. Cause I just gotten a new shipment of it. Mm-hmm. And my friend walked in she's like, Oh my God, I love Vegamore. I use this. Like she was so excited. Um, so the word is out. My friend likes it. Then that, you know, it's good. You got smart friends. Vegamore has transformed our hair and so many others. Their clean and vegan approach to hair health uses smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair with help from Vegamore get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty-free and never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The GRO Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. You just massage that shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with conditioner on lengths and ends. It's as simple as that. Having Vegamore as our go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer for our overall hair health. I feel like mine has been stronger, silkier, shinier. It does. It looks great. Wouldn't you say love? And yeah. it, it smells nice. It does smell good. It's lovely. It doesn't smell like mayonnaise. That's for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, Vegamore uh, is wonderful because there is a no risk when trying because they have a 90 day money back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying that they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Mm-hmm. Give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore to go to vegamore.com slash relax and use code relax to save 20% on your first order. That's dot com slash relax. Code relax to save 20% at vegamore.com slash relax. relax. Okay, guys. So we have the phone. The Bit of, phone. yeah. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> We're just holding oh the microphone backwards. My God, wow. y'all, 
That was wild. That was crazy. If you're not watching, you have no idea what just happened. You probably didn't hear me when I started talking. <laughs> and that's because I was holding the microphone and talking into the wrong end. Do I don't do even that? know. It feels so, I'm doing it now. Wow. It so well, strange. they probably can't hear you. So. I know they can't hear me because I'm talking to a microphone wow. backwards and it feels that felt was really strange. Crazy. Anyway, um, sorry guys, I'm a little distracted. So, uh, we were uh, turned on the phone and we we're going to wait to get phone calls, but then the phone calls didn't come in and the phone said no service. And Eric's like, why does it say no service? I was like, I don't know. It's so weird. It says no service. No phone calls were coming in. And we we're like, we really want to answer the phone. Why isn't it working? And then Eric goes, I don't know. I, I mean, could it be because I didn't pay the bill? <laughs> like shocked that they would. And I was like, yes, why did you not? not pay the bill? And he was like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And I was like, well, just take it. Service. Just take it. Service provider. Goes, it's, it's 2022. I have to like pay bills. You're not just going to do it automatically. I think you said what? So I have to pay it every month. <laughs> Which is so weird because Eric's not like that with any of our other bills. I'm, like we're very good about paying our bills. Outstanding credit. I'm very good at paying bills. Exa well, but now like, you don't. Well, I sa this is under your name. Set love. up like auto pay. Oh, now I don't have good credit. Well, this is gonna. You gotta. You need to pay this. You gotta do this today. Anyway, we yeah. have no service today because Eric forgot to pay the bill. So I'm just gonna read a couple text messages for you guys. Okay. That's good enough. I know. It's a, we'll, we'll we'll fix it by next week. Hopefully, I hope you've paid it by next week. I'm sure the. the the charges I'll will do it go today. Up. Okay. So I think we've talked about this one before, but I really like it. So this sweet girl texts and said, y'all people who honk their car horns, uh, con gusto need to effing relax. Holy bleep. I just got honked at literally for slowing down because there were people crossing the street. Like you want me to just run them over bro. And I think we've talked about this before, but car horns, there's no way to honk a car car horn and it not yeah. sound aggressive. Yeah. Like if you honk your horn, it means like F you, I hate you to me. Like when I hear it, I hear like aggression, no matter if it's just like to let me know of something. And like, if it's mm -hmm. a gentle, like, Oh, the light screen, like there's no version. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. And it's a light screen and you're the person there and you're like not paying attention for a second. And they'd be behind you. You're like, so, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. If you're and the you're person behind that person, you just, just want to be like, like, Oh, sorry. Excuse me, excuse like I wish there like, were, never I think sounds we've like said that. this before yeah. in the podcast. Like we wish we there were different car horns that you could honk that are like a different kind of you horn. can go now or yeah. like excuse me <laughs> as if it was like <laughs> yeah anyway so i totally agree with that it's always sounds very aggressive yeah and that that thing when people beep at you to go and there's people it's like i've said this al aloud many yeah. times what do you want me to do murder them so right. you can get where you're going faster you I've, would like me to say, murder i've heard you say you want me to drive through the cars in front of me yeah like do you want yeah like anyway yeah so um that was a good one um, okay. The next one I wanted to, Oh, this one isn't a relax. It's just like a great question. And uh -huh. I'm excited about this. It says, Colleen and Eric, are you guys watching big brother? Of course. Yes, we are. And the reason I wanted Started to bring it up is because talking about it. I got Eric, um, to start watching big brother with me. And, um, I love big brother and I love big brother. And I started watching it when it was like really good, like Frankie's season was really good. And Frankie's a friend of mine. Um, and before that I was watching it and those seasons were great, but over the years, like, I don't know, I feel like big brother's not quite as good There's as it some used good to ones, be. Some, some good ones, some good episodes, but like, I remember back in the day, like survivor and big brother, like every episode was like crazy. Mm. And now wow. I feel like I don't know. Some episodes are great and some episodes are kind of boring. Yeah. Some um, seasons you've maybe watched them like, meh. Yeah. Some are pretty good. But last night we watched an episode that, that was, was, we were both television. like, we were like jumping. We were like, this I just kept squeezing you and you're like, ah, bruises. bruises. I know. He kept squeezing so I was like me. excitedly We were like cuddling you. the tightest we've ever cuddled in our whole entire marriage because yeah. we were so excited about this episode yeah, of Big it was Brother. Really good. It was really great. And I don't want to give away any spoilers, but we really liked the episode. It was chaos. It was crazy. So, yes, so we are good. watching it and we love it. And um, then I also really liked this question. Hey guys, Lily here. Hi, Lily. Question for Eric. Oh, uh oh. What would you be if you weren't an actor? Love the podcast. And I don't think I've asked you this question. If I wasn't an actor? Like if you never got into acting, if you never- Oh, if I never got into acting. Yeah, like if you had to pick a different career. Path. I remember when I was um, in college, um, my parents, and rightfully so, were kind of terrified that I was a theater major and was was- thinking about pursuing that professionally and they strongly encouraged me to also double major in education and to be a teacher you mm -hmm. know what i mean um and i my experience you teach science no 
English. Okay. You know. What about you could teach about creative writing? But you're so good at science. Theater. But yeah, I, a lot of the th- my theater experience had been with like English teachers that were also like the the person that would direct plays in mm-hmm. high school or whatever. So that like made sense to my brain. But then I started taking education classes and it just it wasn't for me. Um so I so I don't think that would have happened. I don't know. Like a a carpenter. Hmm. Or yeah, I um I didn't really have like a backup plan. I feel like you I don't you still. do something in the arts still. Like whether it be like be, start a band and become a musician yeah, or I tried like that. But I think I'm Not saying if real, like acting real. wasn't a thing that you yeah. would probably go into that or like some sort of art. Yeah. I loved writing. Yeah. I feel like it would still be, it would be like production design or writing or, you know, I loved all those things. Mm -hmm. Um, just acting seemed like the, you know, so (laughs) easy. (laughs) I'm kidding. Oh my gosh. Um, it seems so fun. You know what I mean? To play pretend and do do those things. And I was, I was encouraged in it. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't know. Carp, I guess if it was outside of that total profession, you maybe like, I love woodworking. Mm Mm-hmm. A carpenter. Mm -hmm. But I think you need to know lots about math to do that. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I'm not good at carpentry. You gotta get the angles right, you know? Yeah, that doesn't sound like I think there's a lot of math in carpentry. I wouldn't know. Like measuring things. I'm not big on measuring. I just kind of eyeball it, most things that require that. Hmm. Well, I love that. Is that okay? That's great. Just like a horrible carpenter. You can be a horrible carpenter. Yeah. You gonna do that? Maybe someday. Okay. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes, guys. Yeah. Um, any other questions? No, those, that, those that was, I was curious about that answer. Cause I feel like I would have guessed those things, but yeah, yeah I feel like you'd be in a band. Yeah. That, probably. That's something I, tr- uh, you know, I did more of a, as a hobby mm-hmm. for a while. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway. Well, that's all she wrote for today, guys. Yeah. What a great episode. We hope you enjoyed. Sorry to pay the phone bill guys. It's all good. You can pay it for next week. Why would text come through then? And the and the because I've I've already explained this, my dear love. Because of the the Wi Fi. Ah. Uh-huh. So we have Wi Fi, so we could get some Facetimes, and we. So could it's get, just like a little computer on Wi Fi. Yes, it's a little computer. It's not a phone that has been provided for. Right. There is no by phone a telecom service. company. It's like your your iPad. Your iPad. You think that's messing up my credit? If you don't pay bills, <laughs> yes, it messes up your credit. <laughs> So yeah, I think it might. I'll pay it and I'll. Set and by up. the way, it's our credit because we're married, oh, so it affects me too, my sweet I'm love. Sorry, love. It's okay. I think it's probably still very fixable. Yeah, you just got to pay the I've bill. Had good credit for so long. It's just one phone bill. One. Well, time. just you should just make sure to pay it. Yeah. Yeah. So I let's do that. Here's the thing: I don't wouldn't even know where to start. Okay, that's not. How good. do I find them? We. Oh my god, we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.